Your soul seeks the highest feeling. It seeks to be, to experience, perfect love. It is perfect love, and it knows this. Yet it wishes to do more than know it. It wishes to be it in its experience. Of course you are seeking to be God. What else did you think you were up to? But you have created religions that tell you you are born in sin, that you are sinners at birth, in order to convince you of your own evil. Yet if I told you you are God, you are born of God, that you are pure gods and goddesses, at birth, pure love, you would reject me. All your life you have spent convincing yourself that you are bad. Not only that you are bad, but the things you want are bad. Sex is bad, money is bad, joy is bad, power is bad, having a lot is bad, a lot of anything. Some of your religions have even got you believing that dancing is bad, music is bad, celebrating life is bad. Soon you'll agree that smiling is bad, laughing is bad, loving is bad. No, my friend, you may not be very clear about many things, but about one thing you are clear. You and most of what you desire are bad. Having made this judgment about yourself, you have decided that your job is to get better. It's all okay, mind you. It's the same destination in any event. It's just that there's a faster way, a shorter route, a quicker path. Which is to accept who and what you are right now. And the demonstration of this. This is what Jesus did. It is the path of the Buddha, the way of the Krishna, the walk of every master who has appeared on every planet. And every master has likewise had the same message. What I am, you are. What I can do, you can do. These things and more you shall also do. You say it is difficult to walk the path of Christ, to follow the teachings of the Buddha, to hold the light of Krishna, to be a master. Yet I tell you this, it is far more difficult to deny who you are than to accept it. You are goodness and mercy and compassion and understanding. You are peace and joy and light. You are forgiveness and patience, strength and courage, a helper in the time of need, a comforter in the time of sorrow, a healer in the time of injury, a teacher in times of confusion. You are the deepest wisdom and the highest truth, the greatest peace and the grandest love. You are these things. And in moments of your life, you have known yourself as these things. Choose now to know yourself as these things always. You can't lose in this game. You can't go wrong. It's not part of the plan. There's no way to not get where you are going. There's no way to miss your destination. If God is your target, you're in luck because God is so big you can't miss. Life is creation, not a discovery. You do not live each day to discover what it holds for you, but to create it. You are creating your reality every minute, probably without even knowing it. Here's why that is so, and how that works. I have created you in the image and likeness of God. God is the creator. You are three beings in one, the Holy Trinity. Creation is a process that proceeds from these three parts of your being. Put another way, you create at three levels. The tools of creation are thought, word, and deed. All creation begins with thought, or proceeds from the Father. All creation then moves to the word. Ask and you shall receive. Speak and it shall be done unto you. All creation is fulfilled in deed. And the world has been made flesh and dwelt among us. That which you think of but never speak of creates at one level. 
That which you think of and speak of creates at another level. That which you think, speak, and do becomes manifest in your reality. To think, speak, and do something which you do not truly believe is impossible. Therefore, the process of creation must include belief or knowing. This is absolute faith. This is beyond hoping. This is knowing of a certainty. By your faith shall ye be healed. Therefore, the doing part of creation always includes knowing. It is a gut-level clarity, a total certainty, a complete acceptance as reality of something. The place of knowing is a place of intense and incredible gratitude. It is a thankfulness in advance, and that perhaps is the biggest key to creation. To be grateful before and for the creation. It is the sure sign of mastery. All masters know in advance that the deed has been done. Celebrate and enjoy all that you create, all that you have created. To reject any part of it is to reject a part of yourself. Whatever it is that is now presenting itself as part of your creation, own it, claim it, bless it, be thankful for it. Seek not to condemn it, for to condemn it is to condemn yourself. If there is some aspect of creation you find you do not enjoy, bless it and simply change it. Choose again. Call forth a new reality. Think a new thought. Say a new word. Do a new thing. Do this magnificently and the rest of the world will follow you. Ask it to. Call for it to. Say, I am the life and the way. Follow me. This is how to manifest God's will on earth as it is in heaven. Some of you are walking in wakefulness and some of you are sleepwalking. Yet all of you are creating your reality. Creating, not discovering. Using the power I have given you in the process I've just described. You get your life to take off by first becoming very clear in your thinking about it. Think about what you want to be, to do, and have. Think about it often until you are very clear about this. Then, when you are very clear, think about nothing else. Imagine no other possibilities. Throw all negative thoughts out of your mental constructions. Lose all pessimism. Release all doubts. Reject all fears. Discipline your mind to hold fast to the original creative thought. When your thoughts are clear and steadfast, begin to speak them as truths. Say them out loud. Use the greatest command that calls forth creative power. I am. Make I am statements to others. I am is the strongest creative statement in the universe. Whatever you think, whatever you say, after the words I am, sets into motion those experiences, calls them forth, brings them to you. There is no other way the universe knows how to work. There is no other route it knows how to take. The universe responds to I am as would a genie in a bottle. Harnessing your thoughts, exercising control over them, is not as difficult as it might seem. It is all a matter of discipline. It is a question of intent. The first step is learning to monitor your thoughts. Think about what you are thinking about. When you catch yourself thinking about negative thoughts, thoughts that negate your highest idea about a thing, think again. I want you to do this literally. If you think you are in a doldrum, in a pickle, and no good can come of it, think again. If you think the world is a bad place, filled with negative events, think again. If you think your life is falling apart, and it looks as if you will never get it back together again, think again. You can train yourself to do this. Just look how well you've trained yourself not to do it. 
Every heart which earnestly asks, which is the path to God, is shown. Each is given a heartfelt truth. Come to me along the path of your heart, not through a journey of your mind. You will never find me in your mind. In order to truly know God, you have to be out of your mind. And yet I tell you this, I am neither a king nor a ruler. I am simply and awesomely the creator. Yet the creator does not rule, but merely creates, 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 and keeps on creating. I have created you, blessed you, in the image and likeness of me. And I have made certain promises and commitments to you. I have told you in plain language how it will be with you when you become as one with me. You are as Moses was, an earnest seeker. Moses, too, as do you now, stood before me, begging for answers. O God of my fathers, he called, God of my God, deign to show me, give me a sign that I may tell my people. How can we know that we are chosen? And I came to Moses even as I come to you with the divine covenant, an everlasting promise, a sure and certain commitment. How can I be sure, Moses asked, because I have told you, I said, you have the word of God. And the word of God was not a commandment, but a covenant. These then are the ten commitments. You shall know that you have taken the path to God, and you shall know that you have found God. For there will be these signs, these indications, these changes in you. You shall love God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. And there shall be no other God set before me. No longer will you worship human love or success or money or power, nor any symbol thereof. You will set aside these things as a child sets aside toys, not because they are unworthy, but because you have outgrown them. And you shall know that you've taken the path to God, because you shall not use the name of God in vain, nor will you call upon me for frivolous things. You will understand the power of words and of thoughts, and you would not think of invoking the name of God in an ungodly manner. You shall not use my name in vain because you cannot, for my name, the great I am, is never used in vain. That is without result, nor can it ever be. And when you have found God, you shall know this, and I shall give you these signs as well. You shall remember to keep a day for me, and you shall call it holy. Do this so you do not stay in your illusion, but cause yourself to remember who and what you are, and then shall you soon call every day the Sabbath and every moment holy. You shall honor your mother and father, and you will know that you are the Son of God. When you honor your father, mother God, in all that you say or do or think, and even as you so honor the mother, father, God, and your father and mother on earth, so too will you honor everyone. You know you have found God when you observe that you will not murder. That is, willfully kill, without cause. For while you understand that you cannot end another's life in any event, as all life is eternal, you will not choose to terminate any particular incarnation, nor change any life energy from one form to another, without the most sacred justification. Your new reverence for life will cause you to honor all life forms, including plants, trees, and animals, and to impact them only when it is for the highest good. And these other signs I will send you also, that you may know you are on the path to God. You will not defile the purity of love with dishonesty or deceit, for this is adulterous. I promise you, when you have found God, 
you shall not commit adultery. You will not take a thing that is not your own, nor cheat, nor connive, nor harm another to have anything. For this would be to steal. I promise you, when you have found God, you shall not steal. Nor shall you say a thing that is not true, and thus bear false witness. Nor shall you cover your neighbor's spouse. For why would you want your neighbor's spouse when you know all others are your spouse? Nor would you cover your neighbor's goods. For why would you want your neighbor's goods when you know that all goods can be yours and all your goods belong to the world? You will know that you have found the path to God when you see these signs. For I promise that no one who truly seeks shall any longer do these things. It would be impossible to continue such behaviors. These are your freedoms, not your restrictions. These are my commitments, not my commandments. For God does not order about what God has created. God merely tells God's children, this is how you will know you are coming home. <laughs>